Hey, it's been a while since I made a video like this where I'm actually, you know, talking to you straight on camera. It's been a while. So, some time ago, actually, a few years ago, I made a video of Mike's Tech Tips where I explained how to fix a particular problem in Final Fantasy XIV. This problem is where you would get intermittent issues with the joystick, where your character is moving around and then for some reason you would lose input control and your character would just keep moving in a certain direction. Now there was a way to fix that, and that was to deactivate a device numerator in Device Manager in Windows, and that, that has fixed it for me, but it doesn't fix it for everyone else. Well, in the years since having that problem, uh, for a long time I thought it was just an issue that was something that was unique to Final Fantasy XIV. Come to find out, there are other people having this issue in other games using game controllers. And it's they're having the issue with a wide variety of different kinds of devices, different kinds of game controllers and things. And also, uh, I've experienced USB issues. We had USB issues with our server. And I even had a USB issue with my gaming rig itself. And I've learned a lot about USB trying to resolve a lot of these problems. And so solving the issue of the game controller not working properly in Final Fantasy XIV, having that intermittent issue, may not entirely be the fault of the device enumerator in Device Manager. There are other things that could be causing the problem. Now, I'm going to link to it below in the video description a video from Linus Tech Tips where they test cables using a pretty expensive cable tester. It's not the most expensive cable tester. There are really expensive cable testers. This is one of the cheaper ones, but it analyzes the cable, it finds out the quality of the cable, and cable quality can have an effect on your devices. You could have a perfectly decent Chinese-made game controller like this one that you can get from Amazon for about, I think this one was like $25, and it's a, it's a pretty decent game controller. It's not bad. It's got this weird flat cable, and it's USB type A plug, USB 2.0 type A plug. It's not a bad controller um, it, in itself. But that's not uh, that's not the the issue. The device itself could be fine, but the cable could be a problem. There could be a signal loss in the cable. The cable may not be able to deliver enough power to run the device. Sometimes these makers, these manufacturers, will build a perfectly good device, but then they'll pair it with a cable that that can't deliver the power to it properly or doesn't get the signal through to the USB bus and sometimes sometimes they really skim uh, this is not an example of one of them but uh, sometimes you'll get stuff like this little little cheap little devices or or, or inexpensive controllers like these from from Chinese manufacturers, little off-name brands that you've never heard of before. That you buy these because this this identifies as a Xbox controller in Windows, so you can play most any PC game with it, especially console ports, which they almost always support Xbox controllers. But um, you can get these, so they're not always not always paired with the best cables. Now this is I haven't tested this. This is this actually came with a emulation box. But they do work. Windows does identify them as a gamepad. I thought of using them with um, with RetroArch and some emulators. 
and see if I can get it to work, because this would be good with NES games. But the cables, um, the, the device itself could be fine, but the cables may not be up to spec. It may not be great. And that's a problem with a lot of these devices that you can get from real cheap from Amazon or even eBay is the cables may not be great. Uh, another problem is, is that some of them, some of the cheaper devices, they skimp on the uh, USB specs and the APIs that USB uses to function. And they skimp on these. They, they support it enough for it to work, but it may not work perfectly. Also, I have also found that there are some devices that don't play nice with certain controllers. Um, one of the things that happens a lot is if you have a high-end gaming rig, you will usually have more than one USB controller on the motherboard. You might have USB 3.0 ports, maybe USB 2.0, USB 3.0, and you might have 3.1 ports, and maybe a USB-C port. Well, those would be different controllers. Like, say, your USB 3.0 has a different chip controller than the USB 3.1 port. So you have two separate controllers, two separate hubs on the motherboard. And what a lot of the manufacturers, especially ASUS, ASUS is notorious for having USB issues on their motherboards. I have, me and my friends have never had an ASUS board that didn't have USB issues for some reason. But ASUS is known for using separate controllers for the different, for different ports, USB 3.0 and 3.1 with different controllers. What they'll do is they would use a lower cost, maybe a, a cheaper Broadcom chip for the 3.0 ports and maybe a higher quality a controller chip for the 3.1 port. And then there's USB-C. And USB-C is a different animal. USB-C is not guaranteed to be USB 3.1. USB-C is merely a connection standard that can be electrically anything. It can be USB 1.0, it can be USB 2.0. It could be 3.0, it could be 3.1. It could be Thunderbolt. So it's just a connector. It's not, USB-C is not necessarily high speed. But on higher end motherboards, it usually is associated with USB 3.1 or, or better, uh, depending on the age of your board, whether it's a newer board or uh, an older board. Mine's somewhat relatively newer, so it's a 3.1. It's USB 3.1 with a USB-C connector, but it may vary. Like some phones, some uh, cell phones have USB-C, but those are 2.0. Some devices have USB-C ports on them we're plugging in. Those aren't USB 3. Those are US, those are electrically USB 2.0. They just have a USB type C connector. And type C is actually better than micro USB. Micro USB is notoriously a very weak or a very easy to break. That's one of the reasons why the EU wants to force um, cell phone manufacturers to use USB-C. Because C is a much more, the C type connectors are far more robust. Not only is it reversible, where you can, it doesn't matter which direction you plug it in, the jack itself is stronger than a micro USB port. Does it takes it handles more stress than a micro USB port does. So that's why a lot of people are using it. Of course, there's royalties involved with using USB C. Um, other than, and that's why some manufacturers are still going micro USB or 
you'll get proprietary stuff, proprietary connectors that connect to USB or USB-C. You want to try and avoid those if you get controllers. Now, this controller, again, you can get from Amazon. Uh, this one is just, this one's permanently connected. Uh, the newer Xbox controllers, I believe those are USB-C. So those are a good, robust uh, connection. What you can also do is get little magnetic adapters for your cables. There are adapters you can get for your cables that has a little nubbin that plugs into your USB device. And then you connect up, um, and then it turns it into a, a MagSafe sort of device. I've got one of those for my phone works pretty well. Even supports DEX. It's, uh, it's full USB 3.0 connection and it supports DEX. And then you get like um, partially you get a partially proprietary sort of connection like this. This is a Thrustmaster eSwap Pro. This is their modular game controller and this has a slightly proprietary connection with USB um, micro USB I wish it was USB C but it's micro USB and they just did this because it's harder for it to get pulled out it's designed to carry the stress so it doesn't stress the port this part protects it from getting pulled out but you want to try and avoid weird proprietary stuff this is the exception this is this is good even though it is usb micro usb this here is designed to prevent this from being yanked out it's designed to prevent it from being yanked straight out and putting stress on that port. So, one thing to, if you're having this issue in Final Fantasy XIV and in other games where your control cuts out for a few seconds or a second or just a, a brief moment and your, your movement is still moving in one direction, uh, which some people, a lot of people in the comments of that video have been talking about. There are some ways that you can mitigate the problem. One of the things you can do is you can try moving the device to a different controller. If your motherboard has two different types of, again, as I said, if your motherboard has two different types of ports, USB 3 and USB 3.1, Try moving your device to a USB 3.1 slot. Try a port in USB 3.1. I know it's it's not a USB 3.0 device, it's 3.1, but they're backwards compatible. Try moving it to another controller. Because again, as I said, cheaper controllers, they might be, USB might theoretically be able to handle a certain amount of throughput and deliver a certain amount of power in that port. But the quality of the controller and the quality that the motherboard manufacturer puts into it might not be up to spec. So it might say, uh, so the USB spec might say on paper that it will deliver 5 volts of power you know, to devices and you'll be able to handle a certain amount of bandwidth on those ports. Your motherboard may not actually be delivering unless you're using the more higher end side of the board with the better controller and the better ports and the better power delivery. You may not be getting the best out of that. So you might want to try moving to a different port. Uh, with our server, what we had to do is we had to buy a very special USB 3.1 card. And this, what this did is this has four ports on it and each of the two ports has its own separate high-end controller. This thing's over a hundred bucks. And this is a USB card, over a hundred bucks. If you go look on Amazon, USB cards are usually very cheap. This one's over a hundred dollars. It's designed 
for fast throughput. We needed that for external for external storage on our server because we don't have that much internal space for drives internally on Zada. So we needed that really fast speed. We didn't need Zada. We didn't need full Zada speed. But we did need fast access speed. USB 3.0 was fast enough for what we needed. But the... Although it was a high-end motherboard, it's a high-end Threadripper motherboard, the issues with the controller, the USB controller, made it to where we were having all sorts of problems. And those problems went away the moment we switched to a better higher end USB controller, USB card. So those problems went away. I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy a really expensive hundred dollar USB card to solve a problem with a game controller for, for a game. But moving the plug, moving the USB connection from a USB 2.0 to a 3.0 or 3.1 port in the back of your machine, if you if you have those, may help resolve the problem. If you have a controller that can use any cord, like this is a good quality cord right here. So I, I trust that Thrustmaster in Thrustmaster paired this controller up with a high quality cable. It's a good braided cable. It's fairly stiff, probably shielded. Uh, it does have one of those um, ferrite cores on the end to uh, filter out noise on the line. So it does have one of those. And you can buy those separately to put on the line to help uh, get rid of some noise on the line that might be interfering as well. But if you have a controller that can take you know, a standard cable you can replace the cable on. It's not permanent like the other the other game pad I was showing you. It's not permanent. Then look for good cables. Be very careful because some of the bigger brands have um they have knockoffs on Amazon. Uh, one of the really good cable brands for audiovisual equipment is Club 3D and there are lots of knockoffs of them. Avoid Monster Brand? Are they still a thing? If they are Monster Brand, you're paying for the brand name. You're not paying for quality. I've found that Monster Brand stuff is really bad for how much it is. Look for things like Belkin can be good, but not always great. Uh, I'll try to avoid weird named Chinese companies, weird great named companies. Try to go with something that is well known, but be careful because there are knockoffs. Stuff like Monoprice is pretty good. Cables to Go is another good one, but shop around look at reviews, do your research, and make sure that if you're buying monoprice stuff, or if you're buying cables to go, or if you're buying um, Club 3D, I don't know if they do USB. I know they do DisplayPort. Tiger recently bought a Club 3D DisplayPort cable, and it's really good quality. And I have a really good quality DisplayPort cable. It's like super thick and it's braided and everything. So you want to make sure that you're getting a really good cable that's properly shielded and that would pass a test in one of these cable testers. That is a really good quality cable. You want it, you want it shielded. You want it to have good quality copper. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be braided, but braided does help make the, the cable stronger. It does help, help improve the cable's strength so that it won't develop shorts from being 
wound up and, or folded or anything like that. You want to, you want something like that, uh, if you can find it. And make sure, if it's not a brand you've heard of before, make sure you do your research, uh, study up on the reviews, maybe check multiple sites, uh, see if there are any, uh, any blogs and reviews from people of these cables because there are people who review cables for USB and display port and HDMI there are groups that do that but you want to make sure that you get a really good cable for your controller on unless it's you know permanently connected like it is to this Razer Tartarus but if you can replace it, if you can take the cable off and use something else in its place, like with a Xbox controller, you want to get yourself a good cable. And make sure that you're plugged into the best uh, port on the back of your machine. If you have a USB-C port, maybe get a USB-C to Type-A adapter and try that. That's what I had to use in order to get the camera to work on my HTC Vive. I had to get one of those and now my camera works fine so I can actually use it to look around the room when I'm about to do something and I'm in VR. Tigris had to get a $100 USB card to try and get the cameras to work on his Valve Index. I think he's still having problems with that, but I think that might be an index issue, not a not a USB. So I know I've been rambling a lot, but this issue is a lot more complex than simply the device enumerator in Windows. It is USB bandwidth, quality of the cable, the quality of the controller, and some devices conflict with certain USB controllers. The cheaper the controller, the more chances that it might conflict with the device. And it's difficult to predict what will conflict with a device or not. The so USB is not as... It is definitely, definitely not as plug-and-play as it's described on the tin, as they would say a rubber bond. It's not as simple as just plugging something in and it works immediately. Definitely not, especially if you have an ASUS board. I don't know about Gigabyte and other boards, but I know ASUS has got some definite USB issues. I've, I've seen, I have not seen an ASUS board without USB problems. Anyway, hope this helps. Uh, I know I've been rambling, I've been going all over the place with this, but again, check out the video in the description below, Linus Tech Tips, on where they test uh, cables and explain that not all cables are made equal, and uh, do your research. You know, look up blogs about devices that conflict with USB controllers, just be a smarter consumer when you are trying to solve this problem. It's way more complicated than you thought. And so I hope this helps. I have been Mike the Zorch. Thanks for watching.